Forest Pack now supports using regular expressions to match specific geometry to the names of reference objects. Before we get started though, you might be asking what is reference mode? Well, it's a feature of Forest Pack that allows you to target reference objects in a scene. A typical usage might be to replace CAD objects imported from an architect's plans with trees or cars or other items. We already improved it in the last version of Forest Pack by introducing matching by name, but it was a bit limited because it worked by matching just the start of a text string. To demonstrate how it works and the improvements we've made, we'll use this simplified scene that has several reference objects with different names. To be clear, it's the names of the objects that we match, but for clarity I've just used text objects to display the name more clearly in the viewports. So to enable reference mode, go to the distribution rollout and select it from the drop down list. Click on the button to add multiple references and select any objects from the scene you want to use. Initially, you'll get an object in Forest Pack assigned to each reference. And you can see I've moved the pivot so that it'll appear above them in this demo, just again for clarity. Now enable match geometry by name and nothing will change. And that's because although there's nothing in the geometry list with a name that matches any of my references, an unmatched reference will always just take the first item in the list. If we'd like an unmatched marker to remain blank, just add a new item to the first position in the geometry list and ensure that it has no geometry assigned. I'll name it unassigned for clarity. You can now rename the sphere to match some of those markers. For example, tree will match them all since they all start with that word. Tree maple with no hyphen will only match the first marker. If I add a hyphen, it'll match the two next to it, but not the last one, which has a double hyphen. This is where regular expressions can help out. Instead of having to type exact matches, we can create formulas to help to match various different options. To enable it, you go back to the distribution rollout and turn on Use Regular Expressions. So it's a very comprehensive system, and in this tutorial we'll just take a look at a subset of the most used options. First of all, and most usefully, there's a wildcard, which is represented by a full stop. It matches any type of character, alphanumeric or symbol, each time it's used. For example, if I add it seven times, it'll match any word that's seven characters long. In this case, the only one is tree oak. If I add an additional wildcard to change it to eight characters, I get tree pine. So that's a pretty clumsy way of doing things. So instead, I could follow it with an asterisk, which will match the preceding character zero or more times. As you'd expect, that'll match all of the references since they all use zero or more characters. You could also precisely specify how many times we'd like something to repeat. Just add a number after the character you want to count in curly braces and it will match names with exactly that number of repetitions. In this case, any character with a repetition of eight times gives us tree pine, whereas if I change it to seven, we get tree oak. So we can also set a repetition range. So again, if we change our formula so that it's a full stop and then an opening curly brace, and then seven comma 10, and then close the brace, we'll put an object on references that are seven to 10 characters long, the first three markers in this case. So we have several other options. Let's enter tree hyphen maple, and then add a full stop and then an asterisk to try and get all of the maple references. As you can see, the start and the end ones are missing because the first one doesn't have a hyphen and the last one has two. Adding an asterisk after the hyphen gets them all since as you recall, that operator allows the preceding character to appear zero or more times. Now if I change the asterisk to a plus symbol, we lose the first reference. This is because a plus symbol tests for a match of one or more times. Now try changing it to a question mark and we lose the last one. And that's because a question mark matches the preceding character zero or one times. Change it back to an asterisk to grab the whole line. We can also use grouping using normal brackets and a vertical path for a boolean or. For example, let's modify our existing formula to grab the oak references. Add a regular round bracket before the maple, follow it with a vertical bar for an or, and then type oak. Close the brackets and hit return. We've now added the oak references. There are also things called character classes that can test for types of characters rather than specific letters, numbers or symbols. For example, you can use backslash W to test for a character from A to Z and backslash D for numbers. For example, we can enter this formula backslash W asterisk hyphen backslash W asterisk hyphen backslash D asterisk. And this will give us the middle two rows since they fit the pattern, which if written in English would say any number of letters followed by a hyphen 
followed by any number of letters, followed by a hyphen, followed by any number of numbers. Add a plus after the first hyphen and we'll grab that last column too. For a specific range of letters or numbers you can use square brackets. For example, a full stop, then an asterisk, then an opening square bracket, then 2 hyphen 3 close square bracket, gets all of the references that end in a range between 2 and 3. You can do the opposite too, to get characters except those in the square brackets. So I could use 3 in the square brackets to exclude the final column. As you can see it's an incredibly powerful, if admittedly niche addition to Forest Pack that we hope it will help those users that regularly have to work with reference objects. We've added some links in the description if you want more information about how to use regular expressions.